Hello guys, welcome to Rustic Wires uh, Embedded Rust Programming on Drift File Target. So this is continuation of the previous uh, session. So if you haven't uh, watched that, I highly recommend you to watch that before we before you get to watch this. So first. As I said before, I, I am also from a C programming background and trying to dig in into Rust, especially the embedded Rust. And uh, embedded Rust on at least five target, that means that the standard library and uh, few other libraries are not uh, already present for this Rust five. So everything uh, I do, I do from scratch. Okay, so first, this is the crate, which I pushed into the crate.io, and I also have the git repo, and uh, those links are already there in the YouTube channel links, uh, the description, so you can go and uh, look into that. But what is in this is that I have made a a great progress in blinking the blue LED on the HiFi 1 revision B board uh, with embedded Rust. Okay, so this is the code. So, first to start with, let's see the cargo.tyml uh, file. So, if you see here, so this is the crate name, and I have so in a Rust crate, you can have uh, many libraries, but there can be only one uh, binary. So the binary name, uh, I have named it as uh, Rustic Wires, and the path is uh, so slow, sorry, so slash bin.rs. So this would be compiled uh, into a binary named as Rustic Wires. And this binary would uh, use a library which is a HiFi 1 revision B board. And uh, this, these all would uh, eventually change as the code grows. But for now, for this board, the library is very minimal. I have tried to write, I have started writing the library for uh, GPIO and that oh, the code, code is, is really messy. There's a lot of duplication, but uh, I just want to uh, post as I progress. So if you see here, so the first one is uh, I have uh, declared a struct, a Rust structure, named it as GPIO memory map registers. So this order is exactly the same order as in the uh, FE310 manual. Let's go to, so chapter 17 is a GPIO module. So let's jump into chapter 17. And if you see here the memory mapped registers, so it has only one instance and uh, base address of that instance is 0x1001 followed by 2000 in hex and there are 32 numbers of GPIO uh, digital IO pins and this is the memory offset for each of the registers so this is the input value to read the IO pin values and this is to enable less input so and so. So this order is uh, how exactly I have uh, defined the structure with. So why if you scroll down what I have done is uh, so instead of creating a new instead of creating a structure variable with this uh, 
struct definition, what I have done is I have taken the base register from the manual. This is the base register from the manual and I, am, I have typecasted that as a mutable structure of, of the GPIO mem registers. So if I want to write anything into any of these offsets or the registers, what I can just do is I have to just uh, dereference that into the particular uh, register and I can write and read from that. Okay, so this is the uh, way of, what do you say, addressing memory mapped registers in a Rust. Okay, and uh, I, I don't know that there might be other better ways, but uh, as I said before, I am also new to Rust. And uh, as we learn, we will come to know about our better ways, but for now, this is how it is, but let's move on. So in this uh, library, so this is the memory map register structure, and I have written a utility function so if you because if you give a GPA or pin number in decimal or a number like pin 1 to or GPA will runs from 0 to 31 so if you pass a value of 5 to this this would uh, return the bit 0x or it would just return the value one shifted by that many numbers. This is why I, or how I use this is that if I want to enable, okay, let's go to the register here. So if I want to write one into one of the GPIO out value, then at this offset, so it's like, uh, this value plus this, that's the offset for that uh, memory map register. And that is a 32 bit uh, register and the, each bit correspond to or each uh, GPIO pin value. So zero to 31 is the bit position and uh, there are 32 GPIOs. So this would be really handy if this function, if I can pass a a decimal number like five and if I can get the uh, hex value or a value which is nothing but uh, one at the fifth bit position okay for if this is passed to zero if the GPA was zero that should be one at the bit position zero so that's why it returns one and if you pass if this if a value of three is passed to this function, then that should be a one at the bit position two. So this is what it does. So that's this uh, utility function is all about. And uh, this, I have implemented a few methods on uh, top of this uh, empty struct. And uh, in C, you, you can't have an, uh, I'm not sure if, if something like this uh, I have never used anything like this in C, but in Rust, it's very useful because you can uh, implement methods uh, with those struct. So this is just an GPIO struct and uh, it has got nothing in it, but these uh, methods are written on top of the uh, struct. So this is how you do so. IMPL and the struct name, and then you can have those methods here. So all are public functions so that uh, these are accessible or callable from outside the library crate. So one is to configure as in and uh, configure as out, configure as IO because uh, GPIOs can be Sometimes it can be multiplexed as an IO functionality like an SPI pin or a new word pin. So if you want to use that, but uh, I'm building on this uh, to write a high, like write one on the bit and write low, write zero on the bit and so on. So, 
but we will be using only what are what are, what am I using here? So configure as out and uh, right low and right high. So the blue LED on the Hi-Fi One Revision B board is connected to the GPIO. Hold up, what is that? So blue LED is on GPIO twenty one. Okay. So. So calling the method as out with the uh, value 21 here. So GPIO 21 would be configured as out. Then it would write uh, zero into that. And after a delay, it would write one into that. So remember that uh, in the HIFA one revision B board, this uh, pin is pulled up. That means that if you write uh, zero, then it would glow and if you write one then it would turn off the LED okay and if you scroll up these uh, trap handler setting up the trap handler and the uh, setting up the stack all I have discussed in the previous uh, session if you haven't watched please watch the suggested video above and uh, so the as I say I have been telling before that uh, the learn risk five repo and the channel is the one where I would be covering the uh, assembly code of risk five. So it, it comes handy when you when I write in Rust if that is something that has to be written in assembly I can just uh, duplicate the code from that to here. But this trap handler is not uh, doing much except that it just uh, reads and clears but Anyway, this, this, this is for the sake of sanity and completeness, but otherwise, if you see here, I have disabled the uh, interrupts all together, so all the external interrupts. So I'm just uh, M set, what is the MIE set value? I will set it as zero. That means that uh, none of the machine interrupts would be enabled. So the strap handler would would never be, uh, the execution will, would never jump into the trap handler. Okay. So now let's go and uh, build this and run and see how it works. So let's uh, build this code and run. So. So there are a few uh, minimal warnings like this. Uh, what does it say? Help remove this mutable. So let's ignore uh, this for now, but I just want to talk a few things about the config file. So you can, if you are new to Rust, then this file is something that uh, you can set the compilation or compiler options or the linker options and all through this in this dot config file. So there are two configuration files. One is like a config file inside the dot cargo and other one is the cargo dot tyml file. So I have set the optimization level as zero that means uh, it would not optimize anything <coughs> excuse me so when i enable optimization on this i see that uh, the code did not work the reason is uh, the optimizer threw out this uh, delay code so what would happen is like uh, uh, switch on the blue LED and then switch it off, then switch it on in a loop. So since there is no delay, it would be really hard to perceive the on and off. So that's why for now, the config 
I have disabled the compiler optimization. Okay. So So this open OCD config file is, is the same which I use for my assembly code and Landris 5. So I'm just using the same. And uh, just to show you Target is fine. Debug. Rustic wires. So this is the object file, and you can see here these are all the methods, part of the GPIO pin. And where is the start? So this is the trap handler, and this is the start. So if you see here, after the so configure us out, then writing low and branch not equal to. So this is this code is the one that this assembly code corresponds to the while loop here. Not equal to, yeah, is the one. So if that is, so if you enable the optimization, then the compiler throws that out. But for now, so let's run this. So that's object file and So you can watch on the right side, the one side and this, the blue LED should be blinking there. But what's surprising me is, did I load? No, without me loading, I think this is running from the code which I have already loaded into the RAM before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. So this load would just load the ELF in the corresponding memory location. This one, just now this ELF is loaded into the RAM. So you can see on the right side, the blue LEDs are blinking. So it's a very uh, pretty uh, simple code, uh, but there's a lot of work for me to do. If you go to the GitHub repo for Rust on RV35, 32i, then you can see the source here. It would be easier to follow here. And this is a binary.rs, and uh, that's the library. So if you see, there's a lot of duplication. So in every method, I typecast this, and that should be a way to move it outside the methods, but inside the uh, GPA open uh, structure. Okay. So that's it. So if you have any comments, uh, please uh, put it on the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next session.